We are very privileged to have with us this evening the one and only uh, Ganesh Mahipur, Member of Parliament and Shadow Minister of, Min of, of the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development. And this is a work that Ganesh takes very seriously. He has been like a hawk on the People's Progressive Party Civic. And that is why we are here this evening, because Ganesh recently pulled out on social media that there was a reshuffle of sorts at the local government level. Ganesh, tell us a little bit about that. Hi, Sherrod. Good evening, and good evening to all your viewers also. Um, I felt at the time when they when I made that announcement, like if I was in charge of the ministry, oh, because yeah. <laughs> I could not have understood the silence of uh, Sonia Parag, and more so Irfan Ali, because uh, the REOs, they serve at the pleasure of the president, and though they are held accountable by the finance secretary for their action, it's basically the president who gets his nominees to be placed there. And people are oftentimes look for qualified people to put in those respective positions because it is really an accounting officer's position and it requires the individual who is going to serve as the regional executive officer to be very familiar with the uh, financial laws of the country, namely the FMAA, the Procurement Act, the Stores Regulations, and all the other financial laws that are uh, in there for them to follow and be guided by. Um, it was a clandestine move by the People's Progressive Party, and I am not certain what is the reason or rationale uh -huh. behind it. But, you know, as an opposition member of parliament and as that MP that has responsibility for local government and regional development, it is my job. I am paid to keep a close eye on these people and what they do. And I have happened to have figured out that they were basically doing the reshuffle and they have moved the REO for Region 1, they moved the REO for Region 3, and they moved the REO for Region number... Um, the other one is Region number 5. Those are the three that I'm aware of. And what and and what and what do you think, MP My Paul, is at the heart of this? I know it's not because you know they are all performing so sterling, you know, in such a sterling way that they want to share let, that expertise with other regions. What do you think? Let me make it pollucid. That has been done in such a clandestine manner. Let me make it pollucid, Sherrod. No ario currently, none is functioning effectively and efficiently in this country. And outside of the fact that it has to do with many of them being incompetent, it also has to do with them being subject to political directives from the powers that be, the political powers that be. Now, if I'm to examine all the REOs as they were before the 1st of uh, March 2024, we had Region 1 had uh, Tikaram Bisesar. Tikaram Bisesar served before as Deputy Regional Executive Officer under the coalition. And mm -hmm. we have found at the Public Accounts Committee that he neglected his duties at that level as DREO. We have found that things that he was responsible for, many things that he was responsible for, they never happened. Now that he assumed the REO position in 2020 at the change of government, he started to do things differently. I concluded that possibly his actions were uh, aimed at undermining the regional administration during the coalition time. And I told him that. I said when you were DREO, you had responsibilities for certain aspects of the program, program one, admin and finance, and you did not supervise your program properly. And clearly it is a dereliction of duty. But in 2020, you were promoted to REO position and now you're putting measures in place, the same measures that you could have dealt with when you were there as the REO. Don't you think that this is you shirking your responsibilities back then and possibly undermining the then regime? or the then administration, and of course he had his back and forth where he was blaming the existing area, and we asked him to provide the evidence. Could not have. Region 2, this girl that they have there currently, Suzanne Sewak, 
I think if Ms. Sewa is given an opportunity to function without political interference, she may get the opportunity to do better than what she is doing. She still has, in my humble estimation, she still has a lot to learn in terms of the financial laws and ensuring that she follows those financial laws. But she is, uh, she is subject to heavy political interference. At Region wow. 3, they had wow. Jagnarain Sumwar. Well, that was a madman. Sumwar was on a whole different level altogether. He saw himself as though he was the father of these staff members and to some extent a grandfather to them too. Mm -hmm. Speaking to them in loose manner, very, very um, uncouth behavior. And, and there were so many complaints about him and his behavior in terms of how he was operating. Every morning at 8 o'clock, he has a meeting. And it lasts from like 8 to 10 o'clock. And then two hours, nothing of substance but to chastise and, and denigrate and, and talk ill about his staff. Even the original chairman, I was told, was so fed up of him that they actually petitioned the government to replace him. And he was yeah. one that... That was replaced. Region 4 has Donald Gadraj. Well, we, I don't need to go into details about the Gadraj. I think uh, the Gadraj has a repetition in this country, infamous repetition, and they are not the, the best in terms of management. And we know that there are many allegations surrounding the name Gadraj. Region 5 had Genevieve Blackman. Well, we also know that she was not uh, to the point qualified for the position when she was appointed. And uh, she was also replaced, I'm told, for great incompetence and not really satisfying the political instructions that were coming from the regional chairman and other political directives that were coming from other political people within the PPP. Region 6, they have this gentleman, Narendra Prasad. I think he is extremely incompetent also. Uh, Corwin Ward from Region 7, he is somebody who has been in the system for a long time, has 30-something years in the public system, but I don't know, um, I think Gail Teixeira may be hampering him also in terms of his uh, of political directives there at Region 7. I've heard uh -huh. many complaints mm -hmm. of Gail Teixeira sending political directives as to what he must do. Region 8, there is Peter Ramatar, that's Donald Ramatar brother. So I don't need to tell you where his political allegiance is, and I don't need to tell you how much political instruction is also hampering Region 8. As we know, Region 8, as a matter of fact, the school that was, uh, the dormitory that uh, that was burnt, that caused this country 20 young lives, Madison. was directly under the management of the regional administration, and it was uh, Peter Ramutar, who was REO at the time, that had direct supervision over that dormitory in terms of the physical wow. infrastructure. Wow. Uh, Region 9, there is Carl Singh. Carl Singh is infamous in his own way, and we remember many stories. People can Google that name, and they will see who Carl Singh is. Yeah, we know that he was also very integral in the, uh, in the PNC office that they basically stole. And you know that matter is still, I think, engaging the court. And Region 10, they, had, they have Dwight John, who is a central executive member of the PPP. So if you go through all 10 areas, Sherrod, you will see that Region 1 was not a PPP member, Tikaram Besisar. He was not a PPP member nor a PNC member. He was just an incompetent, small individual that knew nothing what he was doing. Region 2, Suzanne Sewak, I'm not aware of her having any political affiliation either. Region 3, Jagnarain Sumwar, that's a PPP. He was there in the recount, and he was representing the People's Progressive Party. So he was given a job, basically, for his, what they may term, hard work at the recount exercise they had. Region 4 is Gadraj. Gadraj is PPP. Genevieve Blackman, I heard people saying that she is PPP. Uh, Narendra is proud PPP from Region 6. Region 7, Corwin Ward, he's neither here nor there also from what I know, uh, having uh, known him in the public service for a number of years. Region 8, Peter Ramatar, PPP. Carl Singh, PPP. Dwight John, PPP. So 10 of these REOs are People's Progressive Party members. And if they are 
well, if they're not members, let me let me take that back. There are 10 Arios who has displayed on numerous occasions their likeness, their affiliation, their proudness to associate with PPP. 10 of them. Of the eight of them, sorry, of the 10 Arios, I am not sure how many have financial background in terms of their qualification to hold these respective positions. And that is why you're finding incompetence and you're finding a sense of not knowing what they have to do in these respective regions right. that is right. causing the need for you to have reshuffles. But look at the reshuffles. Even that is worrying now because competency again comes into play. For Region 1, they have decided to send home Tikaram Bisesar. So Bisesar is no longer in the system and would no longer be a part of the system. Thanks, Mr. But they're replacing him with Siu Chand. Siu Chand is the deputy, or was the deputy ARIO for Region 10 and has now gone as ARIO of Region 1. I am going to be very, um, very kind to say to you, Shara, that I am a bit optimistic with him because he had time in the system mm -hmm. and it is expected that he understands the system and one would expect that you can get something out of him, but we're yet to see that. That's the first one, T uh, Siu Chan, given his experience. But I'm not, I'm not holding him to that either, if you understand me, right? Correct, correct. In three, because they well, have well, removed... Have experience too, but that hasn't... Uh, yeah, no, that's true. That, but I want to be, I want to be fair. I want to be kind, yeah. you know? Region 3, we see um, Jagnarain Samoir being removed completely, and he's going now to head the Civil, the Community Development Council, CDC. Uh, that's another incompetent group of people there. That's the really political lackeys of the PVP that are now a part of the CDC. But the, the Jagnarain Samoir has been removed and, and has gone there. They, they have replaced him with Devanan Ramdat. Now, Ramdat has, uh, he was regional chairman for Region 2 during the 2015 to 2020 period. And uh, in 2020, when the PVP won elections, he got the Arios position in Region 2. And you would remember that there were many stories out there about him when he was serving as Ario back then in 2020. And people can Google also and see. But he has no experience in understanding the financial laws. He has no experience or qualification that can show that he is aptly fit for this position. So that is one we will have to watch. And when you have people who are not knowledgeable of these rules and regulations and are politically aligned, they tend to do and follow political instructions, which leads to massive corruption and mismanagement of the sector, thus causing great worry in the scheme of democracy. Uh, and then the other one is Region 5. Some of, is it a lot of that we're seeing? And perhaps the PVP yes. are exposed to their judgment, but they realize they're coming to crunch time and they're going to get a couple of things done. And if these people stay there, my Lord. No, but, but let's let, let, look. Region 5 is even worse. Genevieve Blackman is an educated woman. She has a number of qualifications to her name. I know that. She was incompetent as REO, but she has a number of qualifications to her name. But they have replaced her with Dwayne Adams. Dwayne Who's Adams Dwayne is the Adams? man who always walks behind Irfan Ali with a notepad to write down every time Irfan says, do this, do that, do the other. He writes down, yes, he's Irfan's shadow. He writes down everything. He served as a city councillor on the uh, mayor and city council of Georgetown, I think. Mm -hmm. And he has not had any, in fact, his first appearance at public accounts was yesterday when we had PAC and he was in lost world. He didn't know nothing oh, that was wow. going on. Yeah, uh, but, world. but I think region five is up for region. Well, you see, we were gonna keep a close eye on these respective regions now because it's coming down to crunch time for elections. They are putting in their political lackeys because these other people who were, they had there, they were not getting enough out of them. And you see, when you have an effective 
public accounts committee that grills these REOs and so on, they tend to reserve participating in activities that are basically uh, wrong. So we have to ensure we balance it properly and we have to ensure we keep our eyes out for them. But I maintain my position that the 10 REOs are all incompetent and they seem not to understand their roles and responsibilities clearly. I do not blame their incompetence solely on them as individuals, but it is because they are subjecting themselves to political directives from the PPP, Jagabats and Trench Crapos, if I may use your two terminologies. Uh, correctly stated. That being said, before I let you go, I noticed the subject minister that you shadow, Tonya Parag, uh, quite recently um, stated that they are working on a on a grand development plan. I know sometimes you just say these things for the sound effect of it. Uh, do you get a sense this is actually happening? And not only that, that they're doing a development plan for the regions, involving the regions, both at the RDC level, the NDC level, and other entities in the region, if it is happening. Sherrod, Sonia was incompetent before becoming a minister. Sonia was incompetent as Minister of Public Service, and Sonia remains incompetent as Minister of Local Government and Regional Development. Everybody saw how she answered those questions in the National Assembly. They were very, very simple questions, and she still could not have provided clarity and answer to the nation. So her degree of incompetence, I think, is higher than any other person within the, the ministerial level at the People's Progressive Party, and perhaps our incompetence is equivalent to that of uh, Irfan Ali. But at the end of the day, saying that you're doing something and not producing it is something else. This ministry has since 2020 said that they are going to have all of these plans in place. And right. nothing has for, uh, has come forward. I have even raised it in the National Assembly since 2020. I've been speaking about it. All the monies they get, they continue to spend it out, but you're not seeing any plan. So this is another, uh, another case where they're just uh, trying to blow hot air and to say that they are going to do X, Y, Z. And then when crunch time comes down, we wouldn't see the end of it. We will not see the end of it. And, and it, it comes back to, to incompetence. And, and perhaps that is the theme that one can uh, can pull across the screen here and say that it's full of incompetence. Yeah, you know, folks say that um, that that Sonia Prague's claim to fame is uh, the work she did, quote unquote, work uh, during the recount period. And I note that uh, those uh, cases, the alleged electoral fraud cases, are about to get underway, and um, they have signaled that she's going to be called as a witness. So uh, I, I guess. Um, all things being equal, she continues to earn her keep. Yeah, well, well, I, I heard through the grapevine just when Dharam Lal was sent off in, in a gracious manner that, uh, that it was she who was begging really to come at local government because she felt as though public service wasn't giving her, giving her the, 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 the stage that she wanted, you know, the performance stage. And, you know, all clowns, they look for a good stage to attract big, uh, big performance and so on, and and, uh, and an open, an open, um, an open gathering. So, 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 in all fairness to her, she begged. I don't know what else she did, but everybody knows that she begged for this position. Now she has it, and it is her job to perform. But I'm not optimistic at all about her performing after that abysmal uh, performance in the National Assembly when it comes to the estimates and answering those questions. Correct, correct. Member of Parliament, Ganesh Mahi Paul, Shadow Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, thank you so much for on such short notice joining us and bringing clarity to this matter. Thanks. Th thank you for having me, Sharon. I do have a, a great rest of the night.